Tom, are you okay? I lost her. Her? She was going to be this epic, trilogy-worthy character. I was going to be the hottest writer in Hollywood. But I can't get past Act One! You need some writer's group therapy. Hello, and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers. Are you ready for your session? The doctors are in. And if you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe and share it with your friends. You can find us online at writersgrouptherapy.com, also on Twitter and Instagram at WG Therapy, individually. I'm Tom underscore Loveman on Twitter, Tom Loveman on Instagram. And on Instagram, I'm Moon Lily Music, and on Twitter, I'm at Roshni Lamino. Let's talk about writing. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, so uh, I get a lot of those. Uh, I get several different newsletters with leads for films, uh, you know, film script requests. Like mm-hmm. uh, I get Ink Tip. I'm on uh, ISA, uh, Network ISA, International Screenwriters Association. And I also get one called Screenwriter Staffing. So every week I get a newsletter and it's got one. Of some, sometimes they come every, every other day or so. One of, some of them are weekly where I get anywhere from six to 10 different leads of people looking for scripts. And this is the time for the contained script. Everybody wants a low budget contained either drama or thriller or um, horror. So I thought we should talk about how do you write a contained script and why you'd want to. I mean, I think the trend was already going that way because it is cheaper you know, you can keep it in one space. You don't have as many actors, all that stuff. So I get it, but especially now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's always been, people, you know, these kind of newsletters are always looking for low budget stuff. There are producers that are looking for things they can do on a cheap. Uh, but even more so lately, like out of 10 leads, like nine of them are all low budget, low budget, ultra low budget contained they're all like that. So everybody's looking for that. And even now with, with the uh, production, you know, dealing with COVID-19, they want really small productions because you can control things a lot easier too. Mm -hmm. You can actually produce something with just a few characters in just a couple locations much easier than you can, you know, something, you know, with a big budget and set pieces and stuff. Or where you have to travel to different locations mm-hmm. as well, you know, that sort of thing is, as opposed to staying in one spot for two weeks and shooting it out, that sort of thing. Definitely. You know, it's funny. Yeah. We talked uh, previously before we started recording about the best contained script films that we've seen. I was having trouble. I only came up with one. You came up with a, a dozen of them. And I think it's because most of the time they're dramas, they're sci-fis, they're thrillers. I couldn't think of a single rom-com or comedy or anything lighthearted that was a contained to one room script sure yeah i mean uh you can rattle them off um panic room is a great one david fincher with jodie foster femke jansen was in something called 100 feet where she's trapped in her house and she can't move more than 100 feet because of she's a house arrest kind of thing cloverfield that uh the one with john goodman and i forget her name it all takes place in a bunker you know Mm -hmm. those are two characters in a bunker for the whole movie pretty much Mm -hmm. super you know claustrophobic kind of thing like literally contained script yeah the only one i could really think of was wait until dark which is a audrey hepburn alan arkin film um but they do still show a few different locations before they get into the meat of the film so there's still two separate locations and it's based off a stage play which is why i think it translated so well to the whole contained script or yeah contained contained room script thing. Um, but yeah, there are a few extra locations now that I think about it, but it's mostly, mostly one room. Yeah. I started to write one that was set on a uh, subway car, uh, that gets, tr- uh, accidentally switched into an alternate dimension. And it's a horror film where the monsters are trying to get in and they have to try to get the subway car back to their own dimension. Um, but while I was writing it, I, I happened to come across a Someone posted something about someone else was writing a movie about people trapped in a subway card with monsters. Didn't have the altered dimension aspect, but Mm -hmm. it was kind of the same story. So I kind of tanked it. But yeah, it was mainly, you know, I was like, okay, where can I put people that they can, you know, have conflict and, you know, um, you know, tension and not have to run around, you know, they can all be there. So I just have to get them into that place and then they're there. Yeah. 
So you can always have, you know, a couple scenes that aren't in your contained location as long as you The you majority get there and of you, it is <laughs> keep them yeah. there. Yeah, and it's funny, you reminded me. You were actually like, Oh Roshni, you have written a contained script, your game night short film. I'm like, Oh yeah. So just to um give a, a synopsis of that briefly, it's just a, a short film about three couples who all meet in an apartment to play games and then they kind of learn how dysfunctional two of the couples really are during the course of the night but it's all in one apartment so i I forgot about that (laughs) i was like oh yeah you can write a comedy in one room yes Uh, i don't know if it could could have worked for a two-hour film but it worked for you know five minutes oh well that i think i think you haven't you had another com a rom-com and rom-coms in general i think while they may not be physically contained they're contained in budgetary and they can be contained in casting because you have one that's only four or five characters and it has one or two busier scenes like a cafe. And then there's mm-hmm. a, a large group event at the end, but 90% of the film is really just, you know, two people on dates and stuff. So it works, I think. Now what I have always understood a contained script to mean though, was they meant one location or few locations. So are you saying that when you see these breakdowns for scripts that they say contained also means just a small cast and like one location or is it only location that they care about it varies um usually sometimes they actually have a location like we want a film that will be set in a cabin in the woods or or in a you know desert town because they have a location somewhere Mm. so that's kind of cool when they have that actually in your script matches what they're looking for because they already have the location and they can control that aspect of it. So, but sometimes it's a minimum three or four locations. Sometimes it's, you know, how many cast members, three or four cast members. Sometimes they're really specific, you know, like, um, like we want something like saw, you know, where it's in one room. Mm, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it, it varies, but yeah, it, it, it can be contained in the aspect of uh, locations, cast. Uh, they can obviously, sometimes they say no visual effects or very little, they often focus on character driven. So you have to make sure your characters are really unique and cool and dynamic um, because they're going to carry the story, obviously. Which you should be doing anyway with your scripts, everybody. (laughs) Character is the most important thing. That is the hill I will die on as a writer. Character is the most important thing. There you go. (laughs) So let's talk about, I mean, I feel like when you're like, okay, everything has to take place in a living room, you're like, ah, because it feels so limiting. So let's talk about how it's actually not. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Now go. you brought it up. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, you're the the character person more than I am. I'm more of the plot and action. So I'm more interested in hearing what you have to say. From what I gather, from what I have experienced, it's... um, you know, it's coming up with that, that hook, that the idea of what's going to keep this story running for an hour and a half Mm -hmm. with these two, three, four people in this very small location. A lot of times you're going to have to come up with that, that hook first, obviously. And then you're, and you're going to have to structure your characters so that, that they have their, their flaws that can create the, the tension and the conflict that needs to keep going. Mm-hmm. And how it's going to, you know, it's it's still a story just like anything else. You have to have your, you know, beginning, middle, end, your inciting incident, your conflicts, your, you know, your resolution. So it's just, you know, from from what I've done, that that is hard. I feel like that's pretty tricky to do in a small space. It's almost like doing a short film, I guess, in some ways where you have to do all of that in a very short period of time. Well, I think when you when you have a contained script, and I think this is why it the genre ends up becoming a horror or a thriller or a drama because not only do you have to have, you have to have the premise for, let's take as a great example, a murder mystery set in a ski cabin. So you have to have the premise. Everyone's going there for a fun ski trip and they all have, and then the character stuff. So they all have their whatever secrets that they're holding on. And then you have to have a reason to keep them there. Oh, there's a snowstorm. Oh, the, the power went out. Oh, we ran out of gas in the car. We can't get down to the hill until the morning. So you have to have a reason to keep them there for everything to happen. Because if people can leave, what's the point of having the film? So I think that's why I was saying, 
it, a comedy, like it doesn't make sense. Okay, the the lights went out. Everyone's just gonna like go party in the hot tub or something, you know. And so, but if you have like say a, a murder mystery in a contained location like that, it just everything just writes itself. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of mm-hmm. it is you have to have, you know, of course the characters' backstories and their their reasons and their motivations with whatever's happening, why they're there in the first place and with each other. But you also have a, have to have a compelling reason to keep the characters in that space over a, the course of time, not just for five minutes, but for three hours for everything to, you know, blow up and then get resolved. A good example of that is like the breakfast club. That's a, yeah. Yeah. You know, the totally unique, different characters who would not otherwise be in the same location if they weren't all in detention in the library, you know, they actually go out into the school a little bit, but most of them are in the library and they're kind of, kind of, you know, just testing the waters and interacting with each other and learning about each other and trying to resolve their preconceived notions. And I feel like that's a really good example. I cannot believe I, that was a movie I watched so much too. Oh my gosh, growing up. But you Mm -hmm. know, what's interesting about that one is there really is no plot. That is a character study movie. True. So you can you can do a contained script and not have a plot, and that's fine too. I guess there's some micro plots within it, you know, the whole evading the principal and sneaking around and stuff like that. But yeah, there's no major overarching uh, plot action that has to. Yeah. happen. it's all character. It's all character arc mm-hmm. as they discover, you know, each other and what they're how they're more alike than they are different, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can't, that's so funny. I can't believe I forgot about that one. It's, it's not, um, of the three, like Molly Ringwald movies and that, like, I always think of them as a trilogy. It's not the one that I gravitate towards. P- Pretty in Pink's probably my favorite from that yeah. like era. So I didn't think about it, but yeah, you're right. It is a contained script, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have a plot. So yeah, that's interesting too. I didn't think about that. <laughs> so yeah, that even goes further to your idea that character is everything in these kind of stories. Because yeah, you can have a, a a hit classic movie with no plot. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> mean, and you have to tell are... you have to tell the story without special effects, without some Deus Ex Machina. You know, like it it has to be from within because it can't be from without. The story cannot be external. Yeah. Any other tips on writing contained scripts? Well, you do a lot of a lot of drama and a lot of sci-fi. So how would you do a sci-fi contained script and yet you can't have special effects or very limited special effects? Well, we wrote um we did synesthesia that all took place in one location, which was my apartment. Um that was a short film, of course, but you could expand it longer. It could definitely be longer, and it was literally one woman and her cell phone most of the time. So, uh, you know, building up the drama in her own mind, basically. She's talking to a non-existent entity, you know, kind of creating her own drama in her, within her own space. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of unique. Reclamation's kind of contained, um, you know, that was a pilot for a web series. But even the stuff I'd written after the pilot, um, where she actually goes, uh, Cassie actually goes into space, it's very contained because you only have her a pilot of a ship and an AI kind of uh, avatar guy is, is your cast and it's on a ship. So you can kind of contain it via the sets you build, you know, and Mm -hmm. you can kind of be creative about doing, I was kind of creative about how they'd be kind of generic. So you wouldn't have to like build that much, just change them into different things. So that's kind of like a moon moon's a a good example of a drama, sci-fi drama. That's real contained. It's Sam Rockwell on the moon with, Mm -hmm himself basically it winds up being <laughs> and uh and a computer which was uh, kevin spacey's voice actually yeah so i mean space is a great place to put a contained uh drama because it's one of the most isolated places in the world you know gravity is basically a contained story although it's extremely high budget because of the visual effects oh my gosh i forgot about gravity too i did see mm-hmm. that one <laughs> i have seen contained scripts anyway carry on <laughs> yeah not a comedy of course exactly yeah, so sci-fi, you know, because of if you're if you're going sci-fi out into space, becomes a great place to do contained. In fact, I have some friends and some Kickstarter people, uh, friends through Kickstarter, I know that have done these. The Fifth Passenger is out on, I think it's on Amazon now. Is uh, I think five characters on a spaceship. It's kind of the lifeboat um, 
scenario. Uh, you know, they've done that in space where guys in a spaceship and there's a stowaway and he can't make it to Mars unless he throws the stowaway out the airlock and he doesn't want to do that. So Mm -hmm. that kind of creates the tension in that. So I've seen several of those kind of um, stories and they can be, you know, you can kind of build on the genre and tweak it and make it unique. And then horror, like we talked about saw, you know, Mm -hmm. synesthesia, these are, you know, psychological thrillers, not a huge budget in a small space, putting people into peril without having to have them run around the world in like an action movie. I'm I'm laughing because you just I'm laughing because one of your earlier statements was space is a great place to have a contained script. That's kind of ironic. Yeah, but it's it true. is. It is. But because because you're stuck on a ship, even though you're in this vast expanse, of course. Yeah. yeah you know, let's discuss one thing that we might see as a trend let me just say i hope not but it would technically be a contained script but i don't know that it would lend itself well for like high drama and high stakes people were writing zoom scripts because it was easy because it's you know the world we live in right now that is technically contained you could do like a whole thing on zoom but uh, pros and cons. Does it really lend itself to a good element of a contained script? There, there have been before coronavirus came around. There have been uh, scripts that did that. Uh, John Cho was in a story. I can't remember what it was called. Just last year, where his daughter goes missing, and he uses her computer to kind of hunt, try to find her. Oh, I saw that. I know what you're talking about. I forget the name. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I can actually see the poster in my head. We watched it. It was, it was pretty good. I mean. You know, I don't really like watching a computer screen all the time. Yeah. But, you know. It, it, it's claustrophobic in its own um, way, you know. But I think in part of, you know, we talked about this um, just in general when we're talking about our Zoom meetings for writers group and stuff. People are kind of Zoomed out. Like, mm-hmm. like we're we've done with it. We've had enough of that. So, so, you know, I don't know that people really want to see movies like that. It kind of reminds them that they're stuck in their house. Mm-hmm. You know, I like I like sci-fi adventures and action adventure dramas because I want to go places and experience things that I couldn't other otherwise experience. I feel like that's people are going to try it. I just don't know how well how successful it's going to be, especially for two and a half hours. Well, it's interesting because they've actually, with everything happening in the world and the pandemic and and the ongoing need to work from home, they have actually determined that when you're FaceTiming or Skyping or doing Zoom meetings, it actually requires the most energy of anything than if you were talking on the phone to someone, than if you were emailing or chatting. And I and that's part of what's contributing to the whole Zoom fatigue because it requires just so much of your attention and your brain and your energy. So can you imagine, like, I don't know about you, but when I go see a movie and I'm in a dark theater and I'm immersed in it, I actually sometimes feel really tired afterwards. So can you imagine going to a two hour movie where you're already going to feel tired because you focus so much on it for two hours and it's a freaking zoom meeting that you watched for two hours. Like you're just going to be comatose in the chair when it's done. I don't know. No, I totally understand that. Yeah. You know, I, I have a bunch of zoom things I do and, yeah, you feel like you're locked in that chair at your desk, which isn't the most comfortable place to be in the first place. Mm-hmm. So to feel that way for two hours um, when you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because even in a contained script, you know, I'm I'm trying to think of, because the examples that I gave, even the one you gave, like Breakfast Club, they still change it up a little bit with the scenery. You know, you see them running down the hallway and stuff like that even wait until dark, they show the airport and they show, you know, a street at some point. So there's still some change to let your brain sort of relax about it. Yeah. I mean, contained doesn't have to be, you know, literally locked in a room. Uh, it, you know, from a budgetary perspective, it's like a a location, a location can have multiple, you know, areas. If you're, if you Mm -hmm. have a school, as a location, you have tremendous amount of flexibility, um, to, you know, use that space because you have a gym and you have a pool and you have a you know a lunchroom and you have classrooms. So there's a lot of variety you can have within that. You have an auto shop. But you know, you have to if you have that. I mean, again, you have to look at contained scripts as a from a almost from a business producing perspective when you're writing it because you have to think what's, you know, the producer going to see when he looks at this script. 
you know, I wrote a basically a low budget paranormal thriller and, you know, I, I pitch it as a, you know, a low budget. It's not really contained, but you know, it takes place in three or four locations, but, and I wrote it to use very little special effects, although there are some, so I'm kind of on the edge there. So I pitch it and see if people are, you know, like it or not, but you know, hasn't sold yet. <laughs> so what would be the average budget for a contained script compared to like, you know, I don't know, maybe this is a bad comparison, but like compared to the Avengers or something like that. <laughs> well, if you take cast out, because sometimes these things are for specific actors, you know, so sometimes okay. that's, that's a, if you, if you, you ignore that and you look at the physical production costs, mm-hmm. usually under a million, sometimes a lot of times under half a million, mm-hmm. if it's called the quote unquote low budget, like, I feel like I can make my paranormal thriller script for probably 50 or 50 to a hundred thousand even. Because wow. you know, I know I wrote it with the locations in mind. Like I know I can go use my cousin's house in Cleveland if I want to. So mm-hmm. you know it's stuff like yeah. that. You know, and it has three or four main char- characters. Um, that you know, it's it's written to do it that way. Yeah. But sometimes they're even ultra low budget, where it's like twenty thousand dollars. So that's probably a situation where they literally have um, a location already, and they just need the story to put into it. So mm. it depends on that. Mm-hmm. Compared to like a, a blockbuster movie, which would probably run at least how much? How You're many? better at numbers than I am. <laughs> well, you know, uh, so there's some, you know, like Dead, I would say Deadpool was, I think, 60-ish, you know, had a lot of marketing as well. But that was theoretically a, one of the lower budget big action movies mm-hmm. that you could see. They actually joked about it in their marketing and stuff. So. <laughs> You know, dead police so breaks the wall and stuff. Oh, we didn't have enough money for that. So, okay, but like I'm talking like a a studio backed release. Yeah. Oh gosh, you know they're they're hundred to three hundred millions. A lot of those movies. So you're looking at a script that could theoretically be done for like five hundred thousand comfortably to something against something that's sixty million. Yeah. That's really mm-hmm. sweet to a producer. Yeah, and you know, and there's always those you know, diamond in the rough kind of things where, you know, like a the Blair Witch project kind of thing, it comes out of nowhere with hardly any budget and then goes off to make a hundred million dollars. Then if you can, and, and that's what these up, up and coming producers and directors are looking for because they're trying, you know, a lot of these, you know, the studios are not really going to these newsletters to pitch their, you know, to source their, their projects. These are smaller produ- uh, producers and smaller directors who are looking for a really good script that they can, they can produce with the money they have and the resources they have to go out and do something to get to that level where they've done their Blair Witch project. And then they get invited to go out and make Jurassic world, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But even, even if you did, you know, like tear jump and you went from, you know, Blair Witch to Jurassic world, if you can do it on a shoestring budget and still recoup, because all of that money that the studio spending has to be recouped before you start seeing anything else, you know, before it starts getting paid out. So, I mean, it's to anyone's advantage for you to do it as low cost as possible. Yeah. That's the, that's the the key draw for writers to write right now, especially to write these low, low budget Mm -hmm. contained scripts, because like I said, I, I get a dozen of these requests a day, you know, so if you've got a script, a good script, and it meets their needs, they're very likely to, you know, at least want to read it and maybe even option it. So and yeah. make it. Yeah. You know, this isn't a situation we talk about writing for the trend a lot of times, like don't write for the trend. Mm-hmm. This isn't like a trend, like, you know, shark movies or whatever, you know, the subject matter trend, a genre trend. This is a, this is a, a system wide, an industry wide trend that's not going away anytime soon because it's a lot easier right now, especially with the restrictions that are going to be placed on productions and the extra costs involved in running productions in the COVID world. A, a very smartly writ, contain, written contained script, you know, that can be made now. It's like, like literally, I think I read a quote it's like, if you, if we can't make it, don't write it. Yeah. If you, yeah. yeah so, if you're thinking this way, you know, do it because it's an option. Do you remember the, I don't know if you saw the Netflix show, the AO. I saw it advertised. I never watched it. Yeah. It's about several people that are kind of like kidnapped and they're put in these, um, clear Lexan cubicle, you know, kind of separated 
cells. And I thought I thought of that when I thought we were when we were doing this episode that that mm-hmm. was another good example because they literally contained each cast member in a separate cube. They're they're blocked off from each other. So they social got distancing. <laughs> social distance. They're social yeah. distance in their in the story. They're kept in these cells that are made of you know lexan. So they're separated. So I feel like this that would be a great thing to go back and do now. Um, but it yeah, was done really. before, way but way before that. Yeah, this is really a time where I feel like oftentimes as writers, we kind of think, oh, sky's the limit, like let the producer and director figure it out. But this is really a time where if you can think like a director or even better, a producer, you have to. Um, The Hollywood Reporter is great for all the up to the minute updates on what's happening in the industry. But right now they're thinking of cutting out extras. They're thinking of CGI uh doing CGI extras and things that would, you know, rack up the budget that would rack up the post-production time, you know, all the restrictions about taking people's temperatures and, you know, hand washing breaks and everyone has to be distant and they can only bring certain people down to the set at a time that is going to, you know, a production that would normally take say a week is going to take three weeks. So you, it starts with you, the writer, and you have to think smart about your script and your story. So everything else down the line can go as fast as possible. Because right now, my estimate is everything's going to take at least three times as long to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your ideas for uh, contained stories? Are are you writing one? Uh, Share it with us and uh, let us know how it's coming along. We'll see you guys soon. 